folks, Tracy Strong Spirit Woman. I would like to address the topic of sugar in this video because we have now all collectively been told sugar is bad and everywhere you go there probably isn't a person alive that doesn't think that if they were to do one thing to improve their diet it would be to eat less sugar. I understand the paranoia because it's just been so widely distributed for several decades now and we are all believing sugar is the cause of diabetes but it's a very reductionistic uh, belief and all of nutrition ends up being dispensed in these sort of meme-like ways uh, where there's so much more complexity going on to the whole biophysiological functions of the body. So um, I'm going to just actually read a little bit of an article by Ray Pete, and he has several articles about sugar. This one is called Glycemia, Starch, and Sugar in Context, and he starts out by first actually defining all the different types of sugars. But uh, basically, it, it, and he has another article called, I think, Sugar Issues. You'll want to refer to both, and I'll link them below. But um, long before there were the means to understand the level of nutrition and biophysiology we now understand, diabetes was long considered this disease of sugar because the urine of diabetics tasted sweet. So that's kind of the backdrop, and this is long before insulin became an industry too. So not only do we have these industry giants like Nabisco and General Mills and others, but you also have big pharma that are behind a lot of um, the passing of various information. And then there's the American Dietetics Association, which is actually now called the AND, I think, instead of the ADA. And... You know, there's a lot of corporate ties to these organizations. They're not as uh, holy as one would want to think. Um, anyway, so it was believed a long time ago before insulin came around that um, diabetes was a sugar disease, but certain studies showed that there was a huge difference for diabetics between when they were given like straight glucose versus actual table sugar. So when they would be given sucrose rather than glucose, they wouldn't, they would no longer be urinating um, the, the sugar like they would when they continued to take glucose. So what Ray Pete writes about is the fact that for proper blood sugar metabolism, you need at least a, equal amounts of fructose to glucose, but there's really a lot more going on than just blood sugar metabolism and insulin. Insulin has many other roles as well as blood sugar. And according to him, the, the blood sugar metabolism is affecting many, many processes in the body. So let me just read some of this article because it's kind of humorous as well as enlightening. So in the 1920s, diabetes was thought to be a disease of insulin deficiency. But Eventually, measurements of insulin showed that diabetics actually often had normal levels or even above normal levels of insulin. So they divided diabetes into two different types, which is actually these days being divided even further because Alzheimer's is now considered or will be perhaps considered a, like a type 3 diabetes. The degenerative diseases associated with hyperglycemia, commonly called diabetes, are only indirectly related to insulin and as an approach to understanding or treating diabetes, the glycemic index of foods is essentially useless and has very little meaning. Insulin is important in the regulation of blood sugar, but its importance has been exaggerated because of the insulin diabetes insulin industry. Insulin itself is accounting for only about 8% of the insulin-like activity of the blood with potassium being probably the largest factor. Potassium from fruits and some potatoes and other vegetables. There probably isn't any process in the body that doesn't potentially affect blood sugar. Now here's the key. 
glucagon, cortisol, adrenaline, growth hormone, and thyroid increase blood sugar. Now, I had blood sugar issues most of my life, and I can tell you there's a definite tie between the adrenaline and the blood sugar balance, because I could feel the out of whack state I would get in when I was going through a major blood sugar imbalance episode, Hy uh, you know, reactive hypoglycemia or whatever it may have been. Anyway, glucagon, cortisol, adrenaline, growth hormone, and thyroid tend to increase the blood sugar, but it is common to interpret hyperglycemia as diabetes without even measuring any of these other factors. Even when insulin-dependent diabetes is diagnosed, they aren't measuring these other factors to see what is controlling or contributing to the high levels of blood sugar. And therefore, people are prescribed insulin and then resign themselves to having to be on insulin injections for the rest of their life without really understanding what were the mechanisms that were causing their blood sugar to be high, right? So it's just like, is if diabetes or high blood sugar was the disease itself rather than understanding that it's a symptom of another imbalance going on in the body. Insulin release is also stimulated by amino acids such as leucine and insulin stimulates cells to absorb amino acids and synthesize proteins. Since insulin lowers blood sugar as it disposes of amino acids, Eating a large amount of protein without carbohydrate can cause a sharp decrease in blood sugar. I started to experience this when we were going really low carb and eating big meal of protein and fat and then man, I wanted to crash afterwards. It was just like whew. This leads to the release of adrenaline and cortisol, which will raise the blood sugar then, adrenaline causes fatty acids to be drawn into the blood from fat stores, especially if there's low glycogen, which there will be if you're on a really low-carb diet, and cortisol causes tissue protein to be broken down into amino acids, some of which used in place of the carbohydrate that's not being ingested, that's not being consumed. Unsaturated fatty acids, adrenaline, and cortisol cause insulin resistance. And you don't hear anyone in the medical establishment discussing that. So here he says, professional opinion can be propagated about 10,000 times faster than research can evaluate it. Or as C.H. Spurgeon said, a lie will travel around the world while truth is just putting on her boots and really, really true on so many levels. In the 1970s, dietitians began talking about the value of including complex carbohydrates in the diet. Many dietitians claimed starches were more slowly absorbed than sugars, and I came around when this information was coming out and it started to eat, you know, the whole grains for a long time, you know, thinking that was what was going to help my blood sugar imbalances. So these dietitians presumed that eating complex carbs in the forms of breads, whole grains, pastas, whatever, would be less disruptive to the blood sugar and insulin levels. So people have been taught to eat whole grains and legumes, but avoid fruit juices. These recommendations and their supporting ideology are still rampant in the culture of the United States, fostered by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the ADA and, uh, uh, and the Diabetes Association, American Diabetes Association, Da, 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 da. Judging by present and past statements of the ADA, now the AND, I think some kind of institutional brain defect might account for their recommendations. Although the Dietetic Association now feebly acknowledges that sugars don't raise blood sugar more quickly than starches, they can't get away from their old absurd, absurd old recommendations, which were never scientifically justified. So they were recommending eating at least six servings a, a day of starch, bread, cereal, starchy vegetables. Start the day with dry cereal, bagel, blah, blah, blah. The Dietetics Association 
association with General Mills, the Breakfast Cereal Empire, and Kellogg, Nabisco, and other food industry giants might have something to do with their starchy opinions. Starch grain embolisms can cause brain damage, but major money can also make people say stupid things. So I'll link to this. It shows why the glycemic index is just really useless, but the fact that sucrose is actually lower glycemic than starch and I'm gonna just perhaps keep repeating this to help people get over the paranoia because again as I've said before I'll say again most of this is mental we have to break down our mental beliefs that keep us from just being more free to trust and do what might be better for us and not just fall for all this disinformation and fear and paranoia it, there's always money Behind it, there are institutions that are huge, that have huge lobby power, deep pockets, and they have profound influence. And this has been uh, the way it's been since the establishment of the American Dietetic Association, as well as probably the Diabetes Association, and on and on. So I urge you to continue to do your own research and think for yourself. And anytime you start to believe any of these memes, whether it's like you, you must eat organic or grass fed or you can't eat sugar, it's poisonous, it's toxic and green smoothies are healthy and whole grains are healthy and all this stuff, try to calm down and just ask yourself, is that really true? Do I really know it's true? Because from my observations of how people eat, they're eating all kinds of these starchy whole grains. I see people eating cold cereals or even oatmeal for breakfast and then pastas and maybe a little animal protein. And you know, everywhere you go, where there you know, might be some food if you're needing a quick fix, aside from a restaurant, you know, you're gonna see grain-based products. Yes, they'll have some sugar. Yes, they'll have some fat, probably not even a good fat. But honestly, when I even experience eating grains versus fruit as my form of carb, or even tubers to an extent, though less so than the grain products, I feel totally different. It is not nourishing my brain like the fruit or even just straight up sugar from honey, real maple syrup, and even sometimes I'll add a little packet of sugar to a steamed milk if I'm out and about and I just feel like doing it. And I am not having a problem personally doing that. Um, so just sharing a link to this below. Hope this was helpful. Uh, ease up experiment it doesn't mean you have to go full throttle with adding a bunch of sugar to your diet and of course raw honey real maple syrup fruit and fruit juice would be a better choice over just plain sugar but sometimes just plain sugar can have its place don't sweat it um i personally think eating some of that with is better for me personally i'll just say than grain products but everyone has to find their own way. And I'm not saying what's right for me is right what is right for you. I'm just trying to offer a voice to help people break down the barriers they may have to actually getting what it is that could provide better health for them, better energy for them. Because you can continue to read more about sugar from Ray Pete and how much it's benefiting the thyroid and the nervous system and everything else. So, um, Okay, that's my message. Hope this was helpful.